Welcome back to the Black Set Society. Today we're about to break down the recent chapter of One Piece. This is some interesting content. We've done a board to a chapter breakdown, but we might consider doing a weekly One Piece breakdown as well. If you guys enjoy this content, let us know in the comment section. Let us know by liking the video so we know that this is something we can do more other than the amazing podcast content we already do for the Black Sense Society podcast. So we might do some manga breakdowns. We like One Piece. We like JJK. My Hero is in its epilogue. So if you want some stuff like that, let us know, of course. But today we're going to be talking about the recent chapter of One Piece. And um, some of us have some issues with the recent chapter. We'll let Miles start it off, our resident One Piece uh, connoisseur. Why the hell can Bonnie access Nika? And, and why did we get that DB super S explanation as to how she can do it? There's no crazy buildup. There, there's no real growing pains. I just don't understand, one, how this is going to influence the story moving forward. Because what is her, what, what's her role? It, it's a complete mirror image, even down to the heartbeat. Oda took the time to illustrate the heartbeat effect under her. So this is essentially a second Joy Boy. Riddell coined it Joy Girl. I just don't understand where we're headed from here. Oda, like, you've been cooking. You've been edging us with the, 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 the D-Clan lore and things of that nature, the lore of the world. I don't like this transformation at all. I, I really didn't like Joy Boy prior to this because I felt like it diluted a lot of Luffy's character. Now I got two of them. Uh, it has to make sense. I'm going to continue to look the other way, Oda, because you my guy. I've been rocking with you. I'm going to look the other way. But we have to find some way to square this away and make it all make sense. Um, I don't really have much to say on it. I'm, I'm actually very – I'm thoroughly disgusted. Uh, I was very unhappy to see her turn into that transformation. Um, and it looks like everybody's shocked. The Giants don't understand it. The only person who seems to be in tune is Luffy. Uh, we need a better explanation than what we got other than her just seeing – imagining what it means to be free and her coming to that that conclusion it also adds some implications what else can she imitate would she be able to imitate zoro's three sword style would she be able to imitate jimbe's um fishman karate how deep is the rabbit hole gonna go can she imitate sanji's you know exoskeleton and she had an understanding this has the potential to probably be the most busted devil fruit in the entire series if she can literally mimic whatever she'd like to mimic with with little to no understanding of what what really what it really takes to get to that point, so I'm hoping Oda kind of squares this away. I'm hoping he comes around the bend. But right now, you got to next week, sir, because there is no break. You got a lot of you got a lot of explaining to do, sir. Yeah. Um. Just so just so we're on the same page, I'm trying to remember how how did she get the devil fruit again? So when she was um in Mary Joie, you know when she was born. Saturn actually did a lot of experimentation on her. Yeah. So the thing is, she doesn't actually have a devil fruit, but the nature of the experiments gave her that ability and, you know, all the penalties that come with a devil fruit. But she didn't actually ingest a fruit. It's all in exper experimentation based. So that's what I assume. I, I'm glad you clarified. So I'm going to leave that to the side. Right? I'm going to leave that to the side. And that could be an interesting point we bring up in a bit. Um, but in terms of the Joy Girl stuff with Bonnie, I mean, I said this too, that the moment I saw the leaks with it, I said, I don't like this. I hated it immediately because I, I knew that this fruit was broken. Like the moment they, they introduced what it really does, I'm like, yo, this this is broken. Like what? But I didn't think they were going all the way because the special thing about Luffy and Joy Boy is that everything's in coherence with the fruit that he has. The only way you obtain the power of his awakened fruit that is a mythical Zoan is if you have the fruit. She's able to copy an awakened ability of a mythical Zoan just because? Like, nah, bro. I'm not jacking that. I'm not with that at all. That kind of eliminates so much of the, of the tension, of the purpose of Luffy's fruit, the fact that she's able to do this. And the biggest thing, and Miles touched upon it, now her role in the story is way bigger than I ever expected it. She's a Joy Boy now. Like, this is... Joy Boy is the pinnacle of One Piece at this point. And she just became one of them. She has to be arguably one of the top three most important characters in One Piece at the point. The moment she got this ability. So, now what is her role? 
is she part? She has to like the only way I'm gonna be honest, which will be crazy, which will be crazy. The only way Oda can escape this is if he kills off Bonnie. That is the only way this can work is I Bonnie agree. dies because there's no way she can continue being in the story with Luffy. It just or they capture her. She has to get out the story somehow. Yeah. Yes, because her and Luffy just riding along together will be wild. Um, it's just the Joy Boy is more than just a power up. We know this. It's a symbol. It's the lore of Joy Boy connects all of One Piece. It is like the most important thing in One Piece right now. Joy Boy and One Piece, like the One Piece and Joy Boy, like right there, the two most important things in One Piece. And the fact that another character was able to do it so easily is crazy. So the the implications are are gigantic for the story, depending on Bonnie's role now. And I just don't, I don't, I don't know what Oda's cooking. In Oda, we trust, but this is probably the one thing that I've seen so far in One Piece that I'm like, I actually don't like this. So. I, I got to see how he kind of makes everything work out. Yeah, uh, I don't like it either. It kind of, I hate when thing. I hate when su the significance of things get like taken away when it's not really necessary. Like Joy Boy was like a symbol for so long. It was like singular. Like, I'm, like we attributed it like, okay, like Luffy's the next Joy Boy, Nika, whatever. Um, and then... He just tells Bonnie, hey, you can do it too. And now she's Joy Girl or whatever you want to call her. Um, yeah, it's probably the first thing I just really don't like in One Piece. But I agree. They probably have to kill her off or use her in some type of weird way. Like maybe she's not the person that uh, a Luffy might not be the person that destroys the red line. Maybe it's her. Uh, maybe I'm just saying, like when it comes to Joy Boy prophecies and stuff like that, maybe there's like one that where she takes the role for that. I don't, I'm trying to figure out like some type of significance because besides just killing her off, like what I'm trying to think of like in Oda's head, what does he have planned for her? Because it has to be something significant if she stays alive. So I'm thinking like maybe she completes one of the prophecies of Nika that we're assuming is going to happen that we're saying Luffy's going to do. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know where they're going with this. And now does now what happens after, does she become a straw hat after all this? Like God, if she becomes a straw hat, they're unfuckwittable, unfuckwittable squad. Can't do anything about them. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Cause we know that like, they're probably going to grab one more member. So right now, like, cause think about it. Her dad just died. Vegapunk died. She has nobody that we know of. Yeah. I mean, no, she, no, no, no. she got those two folks from her village. They're on her crew. They're on her crew? From but her and Kuma's just... village? They're still with her. Yeah, but are they there right now? Well, no, they separated, but they alive. Yeah, yeah. They so I'm just there. saying she she might she might end up be like, yo, I got nowhere to go. And then like, you know how Luffy is. So I, I could see her being the next straw hat. That 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 could make sense. Her filling her fulfilling a prophecy for Nika could make sense. It'll be a stretch, but that's what I'm just assuming might happen. It, it just yeah. dilutes a lot of the work I feel like Luffy put in. Just to add the context for the folks at home, Luffy had to have this fruit from the time he was five years old. He didn't set sail until he was sixteen, working on the fruit. He went through all of these trials and tribulations, fighting all of these strong opponents, you know, improvising, using his imagination. It took him literally dying to reach what would be the pinnacle of his power. He had to die. And just him telling this girl to imagine what it's like to be free, he's able to instantly turn that on. It, it's horrible. It's really, really bad. I, I, I can't believe Oda's doing this to me. It, Kishimoto and Oda back to back are just making me look dumb. I'm Yo, looking dumb. How you feel about what the, what Oda's doing to Luffy? That's how I feel about what Kishimoto's doing with the whole Him Himawari and Naruto stuff. Like, cause all the work that Naruto put in for Himawari to just do that on her, all on her first tries, like just automatically, like mid fight, 
Hill Beast Blast mid fight, healing healing niggas with like a wave of her hand. Like all the work that we've seen Sakura put in, Naruto put in, Tsunade put in, all of it is just like don't matter. It's just like there's they just got cleared with no effort and just I don't know, it just leaves a sour taste in my mouth. It's just it's sad. I'll also say I'm I've mentioned it in the group chat. I'm kind of curious to see now what he does with a rouge. You know, I kind of thought Kid and Killer were going to be the pinnacle of how, you know, important supernovas get to the story. Uh, I feel like Bonnie's far eclipsed them. I'm sorry. The only thing that Law has left, the only thing that Law has left for us is the immortality surgery, which I'm sure he's going to use. But a rouge is the last one. We've seen something from everybody else. Is his significance going to be even greater than this? He he has to be. He has to be worth the payoff, is what I'm saying. He has to, because he's the last one. I just don't see how we can get anything greater than this, though. That is a good point. Miles, um, is there a chance that she can, like, influence, like, the whole Toon Force-y type powers? Is there any way that she could do that, too, now? Like, she, she can is, influence other things be besides her body? Right now. So, I know she won't have any conquerors, because if, if she can do it, if she got that, then Oda got it. I'm, I'm not going to lie, he got it. But I'm assuming she's going to get all of the properties of the devil fruit. She's going to be able to alter uh, surfaces, people, um, create things out of thin air like Luffy was doing with the goggles and things of that nature, the baseball bat, uh, turning things like water and lightning. This is just a lot to give her. This is it's a lot. It's a lot. Be- they're saying right now that they're uh, they've become albino giants in the unofficial uh, translation. So right now she already made herself huge, yeah. and it looks like she's standing on a cloud too. So she probably turned it to rubber so she stand on it. So yeah, Bonnie is pretty broken right now, and I think that's an interesting point in terms of her rouge because technically, when you really think about it, all the supernova had huge roles in the story so far. Mm-hmm. Every single one of them, like they were part of huge plot lines, whether it's with Kaido, with Big Mom, basically all the Yonko. I'm gonna, they all were kind of connected to a Yonko plot line. A rouge. Mm-hmm. Who's a Shanks? That's the only one left. We might Dude. see him at Albev. Maybe. Yeah. Could be connected to Shanks. It could be. He I had think... a run in with Big Mom, but after he won his fight, he left. So I don't know. It definitely p- probably is a Sky Pia thing, though, because obviously of, of his heritage. Um, nah, I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with the Rouge. Also, in this chapter, of course is the stuff with the robot because it seems like the robot is about to do something now now that joy boy is here because it was waiting for joy boy for whatever reason so more lore so now that there is uh now that joy boy is here i'm so curious what this robot does because it seems like it still has something to do it kind of threw me for a loop too because now the robot kind of seems sentient the way he's talking is kind of similar to how zanisha was talking when lucy you know first turned into joy boy on wano Kind of the same thing. I thought you were here. Where'd you go? Um, if you were sentient, sentient the whole time, why the fuck? Like, you just not gonna do shit. Help us out. Um, but okay. interesting work. I did kind of also notice that um, maybe with their heartbeats, he might be able to get a little bit more information out. He might be able to talk a little more because it seems like him being active is in accordance to whenever Luffy is in Gear Five, or I guess now Luffy or Bonnie's going to be in Gear Five. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. If we might get any more information, it does look like the the words that were important based off the last chapter did get cut off. But this message just might not be done. Uh, the elders are very much still in hot pursuit. Doesn't look like we're leaving the island just yet. We might get a little more. It's going to be cool to see. Yeah, and the last thing, the stuff that I put aside. Don't worry, I remember it. Now I'm going to bring it back. Now, what Oda could potentially really dive into now is if the elders were able to create a power like Bonnie's, what they might have in store could be crazy. It could be actually insane. And it makes me think that Emu might be like something disgusting. Whatever Emu really is, he might have some of the craziest power we've seen in One Piece because of what they've made. Because the like like we said, Bonnie's abilities like are some of the most broken. It's probably the most broken ability we've ever seen in One Piece. So the fact that they were working on Bonnie means that they they definitely have more in store. 
for the entirety of One Piece. If we've seen that they were able to create Bonnie's power without like an actual devil fruit, with Emu, I'm imagining he's basically like a all he's basically like all for one, where he has multiple different abilities, multiple multiple devil fruit powers. He's gonna be like OP, where I feel like, <clears throat> of course, like because it's his main enemy is gonna be Luffy. The only person that can stop someone with multiple devil fruits like that is someone like Luffy that has a hack of like the imagination and stuff like that. So I feel like it's kind of like the perfect setup. Someone like Blackbeard, like Emu, people with probably multiple devil fruit powers versus someone that has the ability to like create things from their imagination. I feel I like that's a thought of something. I was also going to say Blackbeard's a pretty good matchup for Emu as well. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I just thought of something. What if the whole reason why they created Bonnie's power was in fact to combat Joy Boy? That is the only reason why this power exists is to copy Joy Boy's ability. So that is exactly the reason why the, the ability is able to copy Joy Boy so easily because that's what they've been working on because Joy Boy was such a problem back then. Now they want something to combat, especially once they knew that they lost the fruit to Shanks and knew someone had it. So they, they had to prepare an alternate plan for Joy Boy. What if that is what Bonnie really is? A alternate plan to fight against Joy Boy. It just didn't to, work out. To expound on, we do know that Vegapunk clearly was a, the smartest brain in the series. He also had a fruit that was aiding in his brain power. We need to talk about Saturn. Because for him to get this done and have Bonnie in this position, that's actually an insane feat. Combat-wise, he may have not have looked the greatest, but if he has the ability to you know experiment and tinker and replicate things like this his arch enemy that has crazy implications on the story also we got to see that if at least one vega punk remains punk records still has the ability to not only function but grow and continue storing knowledge so it's going to kind of be crazy to see that the world government is still going to have a vega punk on their side as the story continues because as things look York is going to get out of this just fine. They're just hunting down Lilith and um, Atlas. So a lot of crazy stuff going on. This definitely is the craziest event in One Piece history, like the narrator said. This is insane. Yeah, and even to kind of go beyond that, they also created the, um, what are they, the Seraphim. Like, we've been, we kind of gloss over that they're like, but they are replicating some of the strongest characters in One Piece. The fact that anybody's able to re replicate Mihawk is actually insane, just period. So, and they're able to replicate their devil fruits too with Boa. With Ku uh, do they have a Kuma copy? I think they do. They do. So they do. They have they might have some crazy technology that now we're kind of getting the, the seeds for. My only concern is I don't want a bunch of Joy Boy copies in like the final war you just got a joy boy, boy seraphim boy. yeah that would be weird joy boy seraphim or something yeah uh, that would be kind of too much but there if the world government they they this 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 just kind of points out that they got some shit they got some stuff in, in the in the vault and blackbeard might steal that stuff because he actually copied saturn so now it's getting it's getting kind of weird but one it's one more thing, and I almost forgot this too. This is gonna be this is gonna be weird hate. Yo, fuck Morgans. The way Morgans published that story while the, the events were first unfolding on Egghead have kind of made the world see Luffy as the bad guy in this situation. The same way there is an air suspicion in regards to the true history of the world 800 years ago and who was good and who was right then. The same thing seems to be happening now because now the world's unsure if it's Luffy responsible for killing um, Vegapunk. And after Vegapunk just gave all this knowledge dump, he definitely looks like the bad guy. So the world government is still going to have an opportunity to spin this and kind of save face. Fuck that stupid Pelican because he, he, he's muddy in the field. Because he didn't do anything wrong and now there's a lot of suspicion in here. This is wild. He, Oda got it. I'm mad at him, but he got it. He got it. 
he got it. Still don't like this Bonnie stuff, but there is a route to make this make sense. Oda could Oda probably Oda probably has something. He said, "Don't worry, y'all pissed at me now, but hey, we we we're still gonna cook. We're still gonna cook." But uh, anything else before we wrap it up for this One Piece chapter? Uh, no, I'm good. Fuck Joy, Joy Boy and Joy Girl, it gonna take over. Uh, and Chakra Jesus. That's about it. Uh, facts. Um. Oh, oh, I just noticed something. I sent something amiss. We must hurry. I just um they're probably talking about the robot, right? Mm -hmm. No, 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 they're talking about Luffy and uh Bonnie. The robots the, the robot to the in, in their eyes is dealt with. Oh, fair, fair, fair. That's why we see uh we see Warkery. Wh whatever the pig dude is. We see him on the shore. Uh we see uh the flying one. I think that's uh Mars. No, that's Jupiter. He's attacking the Straw Hats front uh, directly. It seems like they're just trying to uh, stop the Straw Hats. But when they get there in the next panel, or the next chapter, rather, uh, I'd love to see their reactions to seeing two of their arch enemy. Um, and, if, and if Bonnie does get away and doesn't die or get captured, Saturn is like the biggest fuck of anime history. He's just fucking up the bag. He's fucking up. Oh, for sure. I also want to see how they kind of play with the idea that a lot of these Marines are seeing them. So they kind of have to kill a lot of them afterwards yeah. because nobody can know who they are. So yeah, these uh, some of these Marines are GGs. I'm I wouldn't be surprised if some of these Vice Admirals end up turning to the other side after they try to kill them too. So we'll we'll see how everything. I think they plays. said. I think they said last chapter they're cool with all life forms dying on the island. So do with that what you will. Yeah, they're cooked. They're cooked. But that's all we got for today's breakdown of the recent One Piece chapter. Um, very probably going to be the one of the most controversial One Piece chapters moving forward for good reason. We'll see what happens, though, in Oda. We trust per usual because he never really lets us down. But this is definitely a controversial one. If you guys enjoy, like I said before, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe. Let us know if you guys want us to do more chapter breakdown content in the future. And um, Lonnie, you got something? Uh, yeah, this is kind of breaking news, and I, it'll be good for a clip, so I'll say it now. Uh, the leaker that leaked uh, the solo leveling staff and their frames and some of their things ahead of time, so like he has some, he has a sense of credibility. Uh, he just announced, and apparently it's gonna be announced officially at Anime with Anime Expo on July fourth or whatever, whatever the anime event is, that Ufutobo the people that make Demon Slayer and make Fate, they're going to be the ones animating Omnip Omnipotent Reader. So, so yeah, so my hot take is if they're animating Omnipotent Reader, it, it's pro it, might, it might clear, not clear, it might do better than Solo Leveling and Tower of God. Just off like the... God, I'll, anim never, I'll never give anybody Tower of God, but Omnipotent Reader... I will give you a hot take. It's better than solo leveling. Hey, yo, appreciate everybody. <laughs> I appreciate all of y'all, of course. Um, y'all. You might end up being all time with it might end up being all oh, time. It, it's gonna it's gonna cook. I can explain on the pod because I haven't read a lot of the recent chapters. I stopped at a very certain point, but the in-depth nature of omnipotent reader is way more in-depth than solo leveling. I'm be honest. With them animating it. It's gonna go stupid. It's oh, gonna the go fights, stupid. the lore, like legit. The only important character in Solo Leveling is the main character. Everybody else is kind of meh. But I'm and Reader. They this they is gonna dive be into historic anime. This is gonna yo, be they dive time. into some shit and I'm and Reader. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. It's better Solo Leveling. Ooh. Appreciate y'all. Y'all be a good one. Take care and peace.